All right, guys, we have our eight primal meat here. We got two New York strip steaks, two bone-in ribeyes. We're gonna be doing a reverse sear on the big green egg. Uh, we got our brand new grill grates inside of there as well. And uh, I'm, I know you guys normally see me doing gunpowder and maw-deuce as our mixture that we call buckshot. Honestly, lately I've been doing a little bit of platoon sergeant and gunpowder. Um, so I'm gonna hit them with this. Uh, and then uh, one of these will be for me. And then we got the rest for the team at the warehouse. Um, so let's get them opened up and uh, cooked up. Ready for our exam. As you guys can see, the marbling's good on this. We got our fat cap right there, nice and thick. Oh yeah, look at that. I mean, that's what we're looking for right there. That's gonna be so unbelievably tender. That one's got even better. Your spinalis right there. That is uh, honestly my favorite part of the cow, that right there. So we got all these out. Um, as you guys know, if you don't know, I'm not the biggest fan of using binders. Uh, you can't taste them and it's kind of pointless if you can't taste them to use fancy stuff to hold it on like mustard, hot sauce, oils, all this kind of stuff. As you can see, if you just let your meat thaw and rest, not to room temperature or anything like that, it, they sweat themselves. So since they are nice and moist steaks, I'm gonna hit them with just a little bit of salt, pepper, garlic. And what this is, is you're gonna have a little bit more of a crunch. The actual coarse grain size is gonna be bigger than what's inside of gunpowder. It's gonna give us that awesome salt, pepper, garlic flavor. And that gunpowder is gonna bring out that umami flavor. So I'm gonna hit all of these really quick with that. And then we're gonna follow up with some gunpowder. So we're good to go. I'll go ahead and flip that guy right there. And please, for the love of God, season the sides of your steaks. A lot of times whenever I flip them, I'll pat them, but also on the second pass of the seasoning, I like to do it then so that way this, uh, all your fibers inside the steak will start to open up, get extra juicy. I'll do a little extra seasoning kind of in between these right here so I can just tip them over, pat it inside of it, and we're done. So we're gonna do the same thing as we did on the other side. Hit it with some platoon sergeant. And then not to go Against what I was saying, we'll throw that right down there in the middle. Hit this with some gunpowder. All right. So now we got these things coated good. Anyone who's saying, oh my God, that's so much, it's, it's not. These are some thickens. Not the thickest in the world, but they do more than enough to get the job done. And you'd be surprised on how much flavor you were missing out on by going too light on your seasoning. That is uh, the number one thing I can say most people do. So they go too light, but you know what? It's, 
your own call and your own meat, so you do what you want. So I got these seasoned up. We're gonna take them outside of the big green egg. I got it currently set at 250 degrees. We're gonna put them on, bring them up to about 120 degrees internal, then I'm gonna pull them off, crank that thing up to probably 700 degrees, throw them on, get some awesome sear marks on it, and then we'll call it a day and eat them. All right, so we got the big green egg again at 250 degrees. Always make sure you burp your egg. Got a brand new set of grill grates. Look at that. Look at how shiny they are. So, we're gonna throw in all of our steaks. You can hear that little sizzle. And we're gonna let these roll until they're 120 degrees internal. All right, so we're about to hit temp. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull them now just because I wanna get a good uh, sear on it. And with these grill grates, it's gonna come out perfect. Look at that right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these guys off and also look at this grill grate spatula. Slide right under, prop her off. And the reason why I'm pulling these off is they're basically about 10 degrees or so under where I want them to finish. And this big green egg is only at 250. So we're gonna crank her up nice and hot right now and then as soon as we get up to about 550 to 600 uh, we'll throw the steaks back on so thankfully I have one of these fancy little fan controllers so I'm just gonna crank up the speed on the fan and we will see you then all right guys so we are at temp uh, I'm gonna go ahead and burp this guy really quick and we're gonna throw these steaks on and get a nice sear you can hear that going I'm gonna go ahead and pull this temp probe out We're gonna close this, let it roll since they are basically almost done. Uh, we're probably gonna go 45 seconds aside, flip it 45 seconds. I'm not worried about a cross hatch. Is this an SEA competition or a uh, how well can I burn my steaks? So we'll see you once we're done. I'll burp, burp, and then open up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull them off. Beautiful, look at those. Okay, so we just pulled it off the big green egg. Been letting them rest for a minute. We didn't do any kind of like butter or anything like that. You're just gonna have awesome smoke flavor from the big green egg. Awesome flavor from the steak itself. We'll give her a chop, flip her over. Perfectly medium rare, that's what I like. And then I'm gonna give her a taste test. So we have a strip right there. Tender, smoky, get the good crunch from the platoon sergeant. And again, the awesome umami flavor and just the crust from the gunpowder and the grill grates. Uh, Eight Primal, thank you for this. We're excited to do a lot more with you in the future and uh, we'll see you guys on the grill.